become uh, uh, a patriot. Now he goes by the name Patriot and has dropped his honorable title, Patriot Desmond Olariwaju of the Nigerian Nexus. Good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm happy to be in the studio this morning to look at some of those issues that grace our national daily papers. Well, it's wonderful to have you in the studio once again. Let's, uh, before you walked into the studio, Beto and I were you know, discussing uh, the recent uh, statement by Serap urging the uh, president, you know, to reverse the recent price hike in PMS pending uh, a court verdict. Now, how would you react to this? I, I know you have been quite vocal about uh, the issue of PMS, particularly the constant increase in, in, in the price. How do you think uh, the possibility of this happening uh, can come about? <laughs> Even more serious issues have not been well attended to by the government. So let alone this uh, call by Serap, which is uh, a non-profit organization and uh, social rights uh, organizations. You know, their call is an appeal, which the presidency or the federal government of the, the government of this country can either consider or disband. But the issues remains that certain line there are certain issues that are very pertinent, and that is the issue of lies yes. by government yes. and to the people. You know, when you lie to the people of the country, you expect that they are also going to respond with lies. So this government or this country has been run with so many lies, conspiracies, and all that. You see, the issue of fuel increments every day is a major concern to the Nigerian society and is not healthy for our economy. This has set us backward, thousands of time backward, and that is why you are not seeing major improvement in our daily lives, economy, despite the suspension of certain uh, subsidies, uh, some, some subsidies, so many things, increments in VAT here and there trying to plug holes and all that, yet it is not affecting our daily life because of certain elements that have found themselves in, governor, in government. They're only taking advantage of that space to see how they can manipulate the people. It is unimaginable the way this government or the government of this country at this particular time crafts certain policies and affect the livelihood of the people. Imagine increment in salary, and then in return is four increments. All these are the increment kind of incre increment in salary, then in return is increment in VAT, increment in cost of living and all that. That is to say, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. It is a government of deceit. You are not actually targeting improvement in the quality and the sanctity of humanity. What you are only trying to do is now to be political and trying to be smart. When the government is trying to be smart, this is what you're going to get. And in return, it will set us backward. Instead of development, instead of bringing soccer to the people, you will rather bring more pains and hardship to them. And that is what we are seeing. So the call by Serap to the federal government is timely and is apt. But the big challenge is that the government will not eat to that. The government will not eat to that. And let me tell you, you see why more Nigerians need to come on board? Some of the realities, what you're seeing today in the government is the more reason why a lot of smart and intelligent, patriotic Nigerians need to see themselves as stakeholders going forward if we must come out of this hook. Nigeria is at a crossroad and more people need to come on board and get involved in the policies that shape their daily lives. We cannot continue to allow these elements that are there presently to continue to be the umpire that will determine the way we are going to live our lives. Let me tell you, the reality is that the current hardship and the policies and the way government is being run in Nigeria will undermine our existence and even living our life to the fullest. Majority of Nigerians will not live a happy life before they die. That is the implication. The implication of some of these things you see in governance and some of these tricks and some of these counter tricks that is being uh, delivered to us by government in Nigeria 
it will set us backward in terms of development. It will affect our people. You will continue to see this jackpot syndrome. You will continue to see people not being patriotic and people not contributing to national growth and development. So it is a period, it is a time that every one of us, we need to look at this country, look at these policies and look at ourselves. That is this really what we want? Is this the Nigeria we want? Is this the government we want? And then, if you can have that kind of conscious thought, then the next line of action is for you to have a fundamental change in our daily life. Because you cannot ask for a better Nigeria when you are not acting up as a better Nigerian. So if you want to have a better Nigerian individually, we need to start seeing ourselves as agent of change towards that Nigeria that we want in our businesses, in our personal life, in our approach to anything that has to do with public, we need to just have a turnaround because we cannot continue this way. We can't continue having this hike in petroleum every day. We can't continue to have uh, uh, refineries that are not working. We cannot continue to see, because of the uh, failures of government, successive government, a lot of things have gone bad. Let me tell you, I understand what is happening. Let's also be fair to the government. We understood what is happening. What is happening currently in Nigeria is that Nigeria are, is highly indebted as a nation. Not, Nigeria not. is highly indebted as a nation. So what government is trying to do right now is just to bail itself out. Now let's also bring in other issues in the news so that we maximize time whilst you look to make yeah. your points. Now talking about the indebtedness, we saw earlier on the Vanguard that it took the intervention of the DSS for marketers to recoup 15 billion naira. In what many are tagging the petrol crisis now, the NNPCL over time has been quite lopsided on its position of how much is owed to these petrol marketers who have been crying out long before now. I don't know if you saw that story and what you make of it that it took the DSS to intervene to get 15 billion naira paid back to the marketers. And now Dangote is also coming into the conversations on negotiations so that we can have a more robust supply chain. What do you make of this development? Um... You need to understand that, uh, like I told you, government needs to be sincere. Like I have said earlier, that it is only when a government is sincere that you expect the Nigerian people to empathize with government to see how they can work collaboratively to achieve results. You know, there have been this call for a very long time that the federal government is owing marketers. And some element within the NMPC have refused and denied that allegation that it was not true. At some point, we're told that NMPC is owing suppliers about 6.8 billion US dollars, which we do not even understand how they arrive at that figure because it's coming during the time or period that the Nigerians are paying heavily for this PMS in the market. So this is the true fact and this is the reality that there are certain people the government are not expected to owe because this is buying and selling. So I, I don't understand whether it is wish hunt, whether it is deliberate, or there are certain factor that is responsible for that. For me, the last person you are supposed to owe is somebody who would deliver a product. There are so many government organiz uh, projects that even the, uh, the contractors have not even moved to site, and they've gotten up to 50% of their pays. So we cannot continue to run this, this country like this. How on earth are you going to hold marketer? Are you owing them on the basis of subsidy? Because it is, it is normal. If you say it's because of subsidy, you are trying to get clearance or something, or try to investigate the true effect of what happened during their supply chain. But this one is different. How can somebody supply petrol to the market, sell these petrols to the market, and you are still owing them? So I'm happy that DSS has intervened. Maybe they are trying to do some investigation, whether it's a true or false. Yes. Maybe government, federal government plays an embargo on it. And uh, we should also know, maybe it is some of the past event. It could be the past event, maybe two, three years or one year event. It might not be the recent event. Maybe it has been former administration because in the same climes, in the same situation, you don't expect me to supply without even giving me subsidy and you are still withholding my, but, 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 my money. But Honorable Desmond, don't you think that perhaps there should have been some sort of better transparency as to how much was be or is being owed and how all these monies came about 
with NNPCL running into this massive debt, I mean, paying 15 billion naira to oil marketers, and I'm sure that that is not the entire money. Don't you think there should have been a better way of, you know, transmitting this to the Nigerian population so that we will see and know what the NNPCL is doing with the funds? Shijuki, uh, the biggest challenge we have in governance in Africa and Nigeria inclusive is about issue of transparency and accountability. If these two problems are dealt with and were eliminated from our system, we we'll begin to get it right. The truth is that even when organized individuals approach these institutions for freedom of information at to get this information, sometimes you will, you will be arrested, sometimes you will not be attended to, and that has been the problem. Governance is easy. Governance is easy as, in as much as the government is ready to be transparent. The reason why you see a lot of shady deals in governance in Nigeria, because of this lack of transparency and accountability, it has created a lot of loopholes for some people in the ministries to, 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 to exploit the system. So once there is transparency, once there is transparency, there will be accountability. You see, the two words, they go together. Yes. Once there is transparency, you don't have any option than to be accountable. The reason why NMPC will not tell you the true reality of how much it, they are hoeing these marketers is yes. because some people will benefit from it. The moment they are transparent with the process and everything, you do not have any issue again. We don't have any problem. So the reason why there are problems right now, back and forth, is because there are some shady deals. Now, now, do you think that perhaps the, the coming of, uh, you know, Dangote Refinery into the whole negotiation between uh, the, the NNPCL and marketers will sort of uh, set things straight in, in an already disintegrated oil and gas se se sector? Um, it was our hope initially that now that Dangote is coming into the system as a private sector and a, an independent player and a major stakeholder, it will help Nigerians to understand what is definitely going to be happening in our higher sector. But sir, it was just what we expected, but th that's not what is playing out. Because when Dangote came on board, there are serious issues. Do you even know that till date, Nigerians, this price, petrol price that we pay today is still not justified. And yet, Dangote and NMPC, it seems they are now on the same page. Initially, there was trying, there was some argument and some reactions, counter reaction, uh, in, uh, back and forth between the NMPC and the Dangote. That especially was especially on the issue of price, on, especially especially on the issues of price. But later, there were interventions from the FG, intervention from some stakeholders, and then they resolved the issue of supplies and all that, and they gave us a template. And even the templates, I mean, the price that was given to us was also countered by the Dangote ref uh, refinery group at some point. But later, today, Nigerians are paying over 1,000 Naira for petrol PMAs. You see, it is, for me, the entire process is not clear. It's not, even Dangote is not being sincere. Or, f uh, or maybe they have been tied not to be transparent or to, to let Nigerians know exactly what is happening. How much do they get the barrel of uh, crude what is the cost of refining crude? Why do Nigerians have to pay 950 Naira per litre? They were not transparent enough if, by, if going by what was available in the news and some of the information given to us by Dangote refineries. The only thing the NMPC was able to do about some, some weeks ago was to give us a template that they get this for at 900 and. 899, 898 Naira from the Dangote refineries. How did they arrive at that? And, and, was and, there and, a and negotiation? Dangote, because now they are buying. And Dangote refinery said that that was not correct. The that statement was, was false. Was false, but did, did, have you seen any group in this country? Have you seen maybe the governor's forum? It have was, you seen it, the National it, Assembly? It, it just, have you seen the, the civil society organization mobilize action to investigate? How did we arrive at 898? Eight. Eight. This is why I'm telling you that we're actually expecting that as Dangote is coming into the system, 
it will open up for more transparency around our crude oil, oil sector. But it is like, because the bigger force is the MMPC. The MMPC set the template. Do you know that I said something on this show some times ago? That just because MMPC want to give us a particular price that we are going to buy, something happened just two weeks before Dangote will release its, its petrol to the market. This they took the price up. That was to set the template for the pricing. And the truth is this: let's now say it. Let's say it's the way it is. The reason why you're seeing this front and back is that Nigeria as a country is in a mess. Successive government has plunged this gov this country into mess. Mal administration, bad policies, inconsistency in, of government, and lack of accountability and sincerity of gov of purpose by the successive government has made Nigeria to be highly indebted. So now, for us to not be, to, for us not to move or plunge into a state, what they call stateless state or a failed situation. That is why you see that all these things you are seeing right now is just to try to see how they can manage the economy. It's a process of trying to manage the economy because the country economy is in the shame. The country economy is suffering. So all this tax you are seeing, all this hardship that is being meted on the people is just a way to manage or to try to recover the country. We understand that. But what we don't understand is that why are we still battling with high cost of expenditure by government or agencies? We understood that there has to be hardship. We understood that there has to be increment in VAT. We understand that subsidy for Naira or for, 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 for uh, dollar yes. we go, subsidy for petrol we go, just because the country needs to come out and be. Uh, um, to stand, on, a, or to on, stand, stand on, on the economy of the country and, 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 to come be, out sustainable. and, and be so sustainable. But currently, we are still spending more money building a uh, vice president's house that is not going to stay, renovating uh, uh, our um, state house medical uh, that the government, the people in the state do not even patronize, S spending billions of naira to get SUVs for senators and all that. We are talking about recovering. The people are now sincere in contributing to the, the recovery of the country. But the government itself... Now, let's talk about this issue of the elites because that's item number four. Mm. It almost feels like last week, Chidjuka and I discussed sacred cows and whatnot. The Punch newspaper is telling us that uh, the Nigerian Customs is moving to ground over 60 private jets today over unpaid impure duties amounting to several billions of naras. Yes. You and I do not own private jets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, why is it hard for the government in its revenue drive? Mm. It's most easier for them to increase tax on every citizen, but in this import duties owed by some of the sacred cows, permit me to use that language, it is very difficult to recoup this money. Bito, you need to understand that some of the billionaires, some of the rich guys you see on the street, they are the account, let me say the finance or the account managers of some of these people you have in offices. It is easy for them to evade tasks because they have the backing and support of some of the people in government. They are principals. They are principals. They are just these properties, most of these things you see on the streets, this wealth and affluence you see. Nigeria is a rich country. But the problem is that some of these natural wealth or commonwealth are too posy, diverted into private pockets. Some of these assets you see, you know, some of the art, uh, code of conduct and art and all these things yeah. does not permit people in public offices to show some of these affluences and to, uh, to show that they are the owner of these rich, rich empires and all that. So they have to plant somebody as maybe somebody who can be a far relative to, to, or front the to front the property. And that is the only justification for a private entity not to pay when they are supposed to pay. And, there are gov and we have government in charge. What usually happens is that a guy at the top, the guys at the top will say, no, leave that guy. Clear those guys. Uh, don't worry, we'll talk about it later. And that was what has been happening. That is the practice. If government can watch it and off some of this shady deals, you'll find out that these private business owners will pay. 
some of them they are cronies and friends of people in authority and that is why it is easy for them to evade tasks and you can understand billions about 270 billion era is being owned by these private jet owners that they are not paying are you telling me completely Bito, that they are private owned and they don't have affiliation with government uh, some people in government it is not completely true if government can wash their hands off this private business and bidding on behalf of some of these private jet owners you see that they will sit up and pay because some of them are doing bus serious business with these private jets do you know how much it costs to shatter some of these jets every day do you know how much they hand that they are not paying tax and they brought in this jet into this country to operate in this country to show excess wealth this will not happen in other climes you can only see that in a country where some people have refused to be patriotic and that's why we are calling on the nigerian people to try as much as possible to save this country now now, now in saving this country honorable desmond let's talk about nigeria's purchasing power you know earlier when we were talking about uh, the cost of pms and how it affects you know nigerians and uh, you know the way that they are able to live a decent life some people have argued that if you look at the price of PMS in Nigeria per liter, it's perhaps one of the lowest on the global stage compared to other countries that have higher prices of PMS per liter. However, these countries have higher purchasing power in the hands of their citizens compared to Nigeria, that is where you have a 70,000 Naira minimum wage that mm -hmm. cannot buy one bag of rice. How do we balance this up and close up the gap in a way where we empower the nigerian people to be able to have that strong purchasing power so that we can have at least the lower class the middle class and the upper class because it appears that the middle class has no, diminished yes, only in the country mm -hmm. what is your take on this uh it is a simple uh issue of plus and minus simple rules of the economics that uh, for me i do not know anything about how much is comparing it's insane in the first instance, for you to compare the cost of buying uh, fuel in Nigeria with maybe Ghana or with Libya or, or in Dubai, or Dubai, it doesn't make sense. It is propaganda. This is a way of trying to, you know, to manage lies. This is a way of pacifying what is not right. You cannot come and tell us that if you are in UK, you buy social amount. It doesn't make sense. You have to look at the country's economy. You have to look at the cost of living. You have to look at the uh, remuneration. You have to look at the economy, the life wire. How many Nigerians are even living a life? How many of them have the basic assets of to lie the basic amen as assets access to the basic amenities talk about shelter you talk about electricity you talk about water how many nigerians can have access to three square meal per day per day you know there are certain things you don't is it a country whereby some people are rich they have the purchasing power they can even buy one thousand liters of petrol and throw it in the water and it's not affected their or economy. even if, if if pms sells for ten even if, Naira even per if can for it. pms is sold in these countries for two thousand dollars they can still afford it it will not affect them because the system thinks about the survival of the people and the system puts in place so many packages that ensure that people live their life to the fullest we are here in nigeria See, talking about the issue of unemployment, is it the unemployed people that would be able to purchase this for? Or the issue of of, of stable electricity? A country where you cannot even have access to loan to even start a business without a collateral, if not for the intervention of some of the policies of government today, that is still not going everywhere. That majority of the people who are supposed to be beneficiaries of this project have lost hope. In government lost trust in the system and not even applying only being recycled these opportunities is now being recycled among certain classes of people in the country 
If you go to our rural communities, a lot of people are still living in abject poverty, as if this state or these communities are ungovernable or they are not part of the governed areas. So we cannot be comparing. That is injustice on the part of the people. You are not being fair. You are not being just to the people of Nigeria. If you start to compare that in other climes, uh, where is even Nigeria buy cheapest, the Nigeria that buy cheapest, how many of them have the purchasing power? How many of them are gainfully employed? How many of them can even sleep in a room, in a small room with roof? A lot of our people sleep in bushes. A lot, majority of our people sleep under, under. Didn't you see the story of how some people are paying more to sleep under bridge in Lagos State? That is the reality oh, of the oh, country. Oh, people living in, in, in areas where... Shanties. The, you shanties know, that, where you have, know where shanties, towns, shanties yeah. towns are more than cities. More organized uh, cities in Nigeria. There is no particular area you go to. If you come to Asoko, you find shanties. You go to Mitama, you find shanties. You go to even Maraba, in some, you still find shanties. You still find slums everywhere. That is the reality. And those are the people that you are expecting to buy this PMA because their source of livelihood is tied around these small and medium scale enterprises. These are self employed people that run their business with small, small generators. And yet, you're making the cost of living high for them. And then some people will come on air like this or go to the media and say that Nigerians are still paying less for food. No, it's not reasonable and it's not wise thing to say on television. So that's why I don't want to join my voice to support that kind of argument because you have to look at the reality. You have to look at the livelihood of the people. How many Nigerians reach the life expectancy age? I mean, it's back that 56 or 58 at the people? moment. As it is now, it's less than 30 years. Do you know that it shocks me to see young people between the age of 25 and 30 having BP, high blood pressure? How many of them have access to the hospitals? A lot of people still believe in taking all these routes because they don't have the money to, ask, to, 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 to go to, to the hospital to access proper health proper care. Healthcare. And that is the reality. There is no purchasing power. So when there is no job, how do you expect people to... Get this money. You want get, them to I go get, into stealing? I get governors are grabbing and the security organizations now they are beefing up seriously. They're, they're, they're and that grappling. is why the gap is very high. Yes. Between and, the rich and the poor. And governors continue to grapple with the reality of paying seventy thousand naira minimum wage. That is the sad you know, I know that part of the problem you're going to face after you must have resolved at this or peg the minimum wage at a certain uh, uh, rate, Yes. the challenge you're going to face is the state government. Do you know that the 33,000 or 35,000 that was agreed many years to be paid to workers, there are some states that still pay half. Some states didn't even implement it. Some states have not even implemented it Why it expires. Now, we are now talking of 70,000 era minimum wage. It is a big challenge, and that is, as a country, we really need to sit and look at how this country will move forward. We need to sit down and talk as people of Nigeria. We need to talk to ourselves because Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria is one of the most blessed countries of the world. Nigeria is blessed with natural resources. Nigeria is blessed with human capital. Nigeria is blessed with diversity, which is a strength, but today has been converted to, 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 to negative things by some uh, elites and some political class. Nigeria is a country with enormous natural resources, but we have not been able to sit down, align our thoughts, define the vision to be very clear, and let everybody be a partaker of the vision and run with it. For us to have a country, Nigeria is not yet a country. No, no. Nigeria is still a nation state. Nation state in the sense that a lot of these nation, nations have not aligned their thought with the common vision and one with it. Nigeria is seriously in need of a father for it to move into a nationhood. And that is the reality. There are a lot of people who do things in isolation and they are, when they are pursuing. In 21st century, we shouldn't be talking about Biafra. Ududu. I saw a news of why one of the so-called uh, uh, fighter in the Yoruba land, Sunday Boo, uh, went to the uh, High Commissioner in Lagos in, in UK 
to submit that uh, in a Odudua nation, a uh, call for Odudua nation. This is not the problem. Even among the Odudua nation, we still have big challenge to face. Now, now let's among the Iowa nation, there is still big challenge. The challenge of Nigeria is that there are three things that have affected us in this country, and that is what lack of patriotism and greed and what they call shamelessness. Now we have very little less than a quarter of an hour to go. Let's speak mm. on one of the biggest political stories making the rounds. Mm. Much like you talked about the agitations, mm. this party used to be the ruling party, now the opposition, mm. the People's Democratic Party. Mm. This morning, more than five newspapers talked mm. about the visions in the rank as it concerns the chairmanship position. Mm. One of the papers this morning, the New Telegraph said, confusion as nine PDP governors divided over the chairmanship position. Now, Damagun is looking to be shifted out of being the caretaker chairman in keeping with the law. In the interim, uh, Al-Haji Mohammed Umar is supposed to step in. What do you think is happening to the PDP? And many are looking at it as probably the last nail in the coffin ahead of 2027. Do you agree? Yes, definitely. You see, we are not sincere with ourselves in this part of the world. Do you know the role of opposition party? The role of opposition party in anywhere in the world is to be a check to the ruling party. Is this the party that is yet to organize its house and put itself together and speak in one voice that want to check the ruling party. I can say part of the problem that we are going through today in terms of our policies of assorting policy inconsistency and anti-people's policy that some of us have cried about in the in, in this government renewed up government. They're actually fueled or they're actually supported by the inconsistency and lack of unity by the opposition party. The PDP, like you said, are the biggest and the largest party in Africa at some time. And they have governed this country for 16 years. So imagine if in 2024, we are still battling with internal crisis after about maybe two years of elections. We have had elections since 2023, early 2023. And from that time till now, they are not already talking of coming together, uniting their thoughts, and resolving whatever issues. Yes, conflict is natural, especially where there are multiple interests. What is not natural is violence. But for, for PDP, for more than 18 months, have not been able to put their house together. Are you telling me that that particular party is ready to take over government in 2027? Yes, you know, selfishness is the problem. All this conflict you're seeing within the PDP is not for, for God's sake. It's not for the sake of the country. It's not for the sake of government. It's not for the sake of the people. It's for the sake of some selfish leaders. And then another thing we need to look at is that could it be that secretly, clandestinely, maybe the APC party is it's sponsoring the conflict? That is, it is only possible if truly the leadership are selfish. And that is why I've never been in the support of the health city minister, Nyesom Wike, to call himself a leader within the PDP and still not supporting or speaking. See, it is good to get appointment. It is in his magnificence, in his magnanimous, that he gave you the appointment. I'm talking about the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes. I'm not believing that the president has given you that appointment as FCT minister for you to be a what? A destabilizing factor within the PDP. Well, well, and that is what is playing out well, right well, now. Well, that's one. In as much as, as the FCT minister has been you know, pointed at as a destabilizing factor within the People's Democratic Party caucus, the uh, now suspended PDP National Party Damagun. chairman, Damagun, has also been fingered in this whole crisis as the leading cause of the internal crisis rocking the PDP, where you see after his suspension, about nine governors, PDP governors, were celebrating or backing the suspension. And, and uh, former Senator Dino Malai also came out to say mm -hmm. in a very, very blatant way, Damagun, it's over. You can go and join the, the APC if you want to. Don't you think Damagun could have been the problem? Shijuke, what is the cost of resolving leadership cost, uh, crisis within the party? The neck. Yes. What is, don't they have uh -huh. a guiding rules or principles? Is there no laid lay down laws, constitution 
that governs the people's democratic party. Is, is it safe to say that Damagon failed as PDP uh, chairman? He has failed woefully. I don't want to join these issues with the but with what we are expecting from an opposition party, I can say it 100% loud voice that the Damagun administration has failed Nigerians because they have a duty of care to the Nigerian people by standing as a foremost opposition party. Because under the administration of good luck, a Bele Jonathan, the ACN then stood up as a strong opposition to that government. And there was a level of what? Um, checks to some of the policies as at that time, even the fuel subsidy as at that time, because they were a strong voice. It's not about just some youth people uh, want to say they want to uh, bad, protest bad governance and such. No. Then, SCN, now APC, they stood united and as if they have a clear direction of where they are going and what they want to achieve. So they were speaking in one voice. They stood against APC, uh, uh, PDP government as at that time. That was what we expected from PDP. It is on that note that I can say this. Hi, Petros, Olufowobi, Olariwaju, Desmond. Say that Damagu has failed the Nigerian people. This time around, not even the PDP people. He has failed the Nigerian people because he has not been able to give us credible opposition and straighten and streamline activities of this present administration of led by President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. So Damagu, first of all, needs to go set aside. Now, beyond that, the PDP, Kakos, and the leadership, they need to sit on a round table and decide either to make Nigeria or to man Nigeria. Are they really ready to first of all stand or serve as a strong opposition? If they are not going to do that, they should scrap the party and allow a stronger voice to come up. I don't know why it's taking the government or the governors too many years to come together. Since they have certain resources, they can contribute to the party activities. They can come together, you understand, and decide that this is what is good for the Nigerian people. And this is where we are going. The reason why majority of the people will not even support the PDP governor is if they have sensed that they too, they are doing it for their selfish interest. And that is why I say that for Nigeria to work, Nigerians must work. And not just work, they must work for a, a better and a, 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 a smooth country. Well, Patriot Forby, we must thank you. Time is far spent on this issue, but we appreciate you for lending your vehement opinions to issues in the news this morning. Uh, the pleasure is mine.